Okay, I hope everyone can hear me. So first of all, thank you for this opportunity to, uh, to speak to you today. I'm here to talk about indoor vertical farming. And um, to many people, if not most people, the concept of growing crops indoor using um, these technologies doesn't match the perception or the um, imaginary concept of how agriculture is or even uh, should be. But I'm here to make the prediction that uh, despite this, every country in the world will have such a vertical farming um, operation by 2035. And uh, to have at least a chance of persuading you that I'm right in this prediction, I have to first uh, tell you a story. And uh, this story starts in Taiwan, say, 50, 60 years ago. So this is pre uh, the rapid industrialization that later, later happened to the island. Um, and uh, the island was covered in this type of um, small farming communities where a family or a couple of families would get together. They would farm the land uh, close to a river, carrying in the water for irrigating the land. Um, the farmer would come out every day, regardless of the weather, to tend to the crops. Upon harvest, two, three, four times a year, he would gather friends and family. Uh, they would harvest together, and so life would uh, go about. And by and large, um, some years better than others, um, they could manage this way. So in this community, a young boy called Winston grew up, and he saw his parents farm the land every day. But despite that, when he was about to reach the working age, his parents were quite against him turning a farmer himself. So they saw the rapid industrialization happening to Taiwan, and uh, they pushed him into that, confident that his future would be in industry, not in farming. And um, so Winston went into technology, and he was actually quite successful. He founded a company that uh, would provide uh, parts for uh, what's called an LCD flat screen. So similar to the one I have down here, and I'm sure you all remember that was we've been around originally needed half to a whole meter to accommodate for your television at home. Uh, now they can hang uh, everywhere in the wall, being only a couple of centimeters wide. So he was very successful in this industry and uh, he uh, managed to IPO the company, uh, put a little bit of money in his pocket and then um, um, looking around to see how, how could he give back to society. And um, despite the fact that his parents have warned him against doing uh, farming, he, uh, he, he ventured into just that, becoming a farmer at age of uh, almost 50 years. So now I throw myself into the story. I'm a Chinese studies major, and I was uh, graduating from a university in Taiwan at the time. And uh, I was fortunate enough to meet Winston's daughter and marry her. And hence, we can also add another title to Winston. He is my father-in-law. And um, surely one day he invited me to visit his farm. And uh, I didn't know quite what to expect. I'm coming from Copenhagen, Denmark, and we are quite a farming country um, ourselves. So I was uh, definitely not expecting to see this. And um, Winston, he was proudly proclaiming that through his years in industry, he had learned that soil could be replaced by water, the sun could be replaced by LEDs, and he also find it difficult to accept that he needed to be subjected to the weather conditions outside. So he chose to build his farm indoor and create his own weather. And uh, I said, surely it looks impressive, but mm, why would you need all these technologies to farm? Because Farming practices have been around for, if not centuries, thousands of years, and to my knowledge, it's worked quite well. And then he said, um, yeah, but then there's another part to that story. Then I need to take you back uh, and give you the full picture of how um, I saw my parents farm when I was a kid. And um, Winston said, there are mainly three reasons why I'm using these technologies to farm. And um, the first reason is I want to farm a product that is healthy for people to eat. The second reason is I want to farm this product without harming the env environment in the same uh, process. And thirdly, 
I want to farm in a way so that I can actually earn a living from doing that. And so he went on to tell a story about how his dad has told him that um, he had to come out uh, more often than he wanted to and spray pesticides on the plants. And um, his father knew that pesticides couldn't by any means be healthy to consume because occasionally he would spray his hand, uh, after which it would get red, rest, and feeling very uncomfortable. And um, somehow his mom seemed to know as well that pesticides weren't good for consumption because she always warned him that when the family eats, we eat from this part of the land, not from this part, meaning that uh, they had a small segment which they didn't spray um, for own consumption. And then the things that they ultimately brought to the market, uh, they had to spray. So he asked his parents like, why, if you know it's not healthy, why, why on earth are you spraying? And um, they told him that we, we've tried not spraying, but um, uh, the, 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 the people in the market won't buy or produce. Uh, and um, if we're very unlucky, then insects will do away with our entire harvest. Uh, then there won't be anything to sell and we won't have any uh, food to put on the table. He also told uh, Winston about how originally when they started out farming, actually the soil was quite um, uh, plenished with, with, uh, with, uh, with nutrients, very soft uh, soil, ideal for farming. And that's because from nature's side, actually uh, soil has a great biodiversity of, of insects, fungus, bacteria, that actually produces the nutrients that plants need to grow. But over time, he found that in order for them to make a living and continuously farm the land, uh, those natural nutrients would be depleted. And as a result, he needed to add nutrients, fertilizer into the soil. And to make matters worse, he found that by every year that passed, that created a vicious uh, circle because as he added in those uh, nutrients, their concentration would exceed uh, natural levels and they would actually uh, deplete the soil of its natural nutrients. And so as every year uh, went on, he had to inject more uh, artificial nutrients into the soil just to keep maintaining the same yield that he had from the previous year. And finally, he made a confession to uh, Winston that after farming for all these years, um, our family has not made any profit. So remember back a few years when the, um, when the, 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 the water came late or the water came early and the, the weather uh, took away one of our harvest or um, remember um, I had to buy this new equipment uh, to keep our farming operation going. And then it turns out that actually he had been borrowing uh, money from the government, which they have been happily borrowing him in the form of subsidy, uh, but he had never ever been able to earn back and pay, repay the, the, the government. So in essence, um, he strongly recommended his son to not um, uh, do, um, do farming business. He said that I was becoming a farmer to live with and off the land, but I found myself in a situation where I uh, got up every day to fight the nature. So that's why Winston, he went on to uh, use all the technologies uh, that he had learned in his previous uh, company to create a farm that looks like that. And then I asked him, so, so how does these technologies actually solve the challenges that your, your um, ancestors were facing? And he said, yes, I have created a farm that's uh, operating in a close environment, so I don't have to fear that my crops get eaten by pests, hence I don't need pesticides. He also said, I have created a closed loop system where I can inject water and nutrients and I can keep circulating them many, many, many times uh, and make sure that all the water, all the nutrients that I use actually are absorbed by the plants. And then I don't need to let any um, uh, excessive fertilizer into the environment and hence pollute the environment. He said that he had, um, he had found a way to control the airflow inside so he could now effectively control the weather. He could control the temperature, he could control the humidity. So also he didn't need to fear of losing another harvest. He had created a perfect 
uh, predictable environment under which he farmed. And um, finally, he has done it so efficiently in terms of uh, growing much more on much less, using all the resources more efficiently, so he's actually able to give himself a salary. And um, I don't know if I have been able to uh, at least challenge your perception of what agriculture is uh, using this story. Uh, but I know for a fact that in Taiwan, we have accomplished at least inspiring the next generation to consider what farming will be for them. And um, the reason I'm making this prediction that in the future, every country will have a vertical farm is because I believe that the next generation will far prefer to work in Winston's farm than to go back and work uh, in um, the outside uh, traditional farm. Thank you very much.